left off, we were talking about the Core GIS Vector Toolkit. And within that toolkit, we have two different ways to systematically select GIS data, by attribute and by location. As we've said before, the vector data model is all about geometry and attributes and the link between them, and so it makes sense that you should be able to query either one, the attributes or the geometry. In the previous video, we'd looked at selection by attribute in detail, which we use to query information about uh, features according to the characteristics stored in the attribute table, and we did this by constructing SQL queries. In this video, we want to look at selection by location and the methods of executing it in detail. Uh, whereas the SQL statements that are used to query attribute tables uh, are in use across many different database platforms, Querying data by location is unique to spatial databases. Selection by location is all about querying data based on geometry, that's stored geometry. So, for instance, questions like which electoral districts are adjacent to this one? Which counties are all inside Illinois? Where are all the voting districts that are adjacent to the Pacific Ocean? All of these queries, and many others like them, are based on the location of certain features. So we'll be looking at these geographic relationships based on the geometry of the features in this video. Sometimes we'll be looking at the geometric uh, relationships between features within a single data file, but often we'll be comparing the geometric relationships between features in two or more files. When you compare selection by attribute and selection by location, you're going to notice a couple of things. Selection by attribute is pretty free form, and that's because SQL, although structured, is pretty free form. There are probably an infinite number of queries that could be made on attribute information. And that's why knowing SQL, its structure, and its syntax is very important because you never know uh, what uh, you're going to need to write in order to execute uh, the particular query that you need. Selection by location is not nearly as free form, and that's because there are only so many spatial relationships that objects can have with one another. Think about objects in two-dimensional space. If I give you two polygons, for instance, you could probably list uh, every possible spatial relationship that these two polygons could have with one another. Uh, you might say that one polygon could be inside the other. You could say that these polygons could overlap. Uh, they might touch each other only along an edge. Uh, they might be in exactly the same place. Uh, they might touch each other but only uh, at one shared vertex. These are the kinds of relationships that we're talking about when we're talking about querying spatial uh, data and spatial relationships in general. I could ask you the same kinds of questions about what kinds of relationships, spatial relationships, can a point have with a polygon, or a point have with a line, or that lines can have with lines, and so forth. And we would come up with a fair list, but one that's certainly uh, finite and reasonably short. We could expand from there into three dimensions and start to consider volumes. That would give us more relationships that these features can have with one another, but still, on the whole, it would be a rather short list uh, and it would be fairly easy to complete. So selection by location is all about selecting features that have one of these spatial relationships with some other feature. The hard part about selection by location is thinking through it spatially and on an abstract level. Because all of the spatial relationships as they're defined in GIS software systems are defined rather abstractly. You have to determine which of these abstract relationships you need to use in your query for your particular purpose. For instance, if you have uh, uh, one U.S. county selected, you've got a file of U.S. counties and one of them is selected, and you want to know all of the counties that are adjacent to it, that touch it. The abstract relationship between these polygons you might want to query might be touch the boundary of. Which of these polygons touch the boundary of the selected polygon? That's a selection by location. That's adapting the abstract relationship uh, into a concrete and particular purpose about when it might need to be applied. When you make a selection by location, uh, you'll do that through a dialog box ordinarily in most software packages where you can basically construct the query in terms of a sentence. If I have a point file that represents the fire hydrants and a polygon that represents uh, a police district, I might say something like, select all fire hydrants that are within the police district. 
That's a spatial query. It's a query uh, based on location. Um, so you can see that this is a selection from a particular file of all features that meet certain spatial criteria that is being within the police district. When students are trying to construct queries for selection by location, I always encourage them to say what they're trying to do in a sentence. If they can do that, or articulate what they want into a single sentence, then chances are they're going to be able to go in and execute that query successfully. For instance, here are some sentences. Select all of the trees that are within a distance of 100 meters of the stream. Select all of the real estate lots that are adjacent to the road. Select all of the real estate lots that contain a house. You should be able to identify within those sentences the words that express a spatial relationship, and those are the ones that are going to be used to execute a query based on location. There are a few situations where whether or not something satisfies the selection criteria might not be perfectly clear. I uh, take this for example. Here we have some point uh, and this polygon. We want all of the points that are within the polygon. That would be pretty simple. But what if I had this point? It's not uh, clearly inside the polygon. Uh, is it inside or out? Uh, well, it's on the boundary. Is something that's on the boundary of a polygon inside or outside of it? Well, that's going to depend on the particular software package that you're using. Some software packages might consider this point to be inside, and some may not. This is a situation where you really need to make sure that you really understand the way that your software operates when you're doing your analysis. That way you're sure that the computer is executing the queries exactly as you expect them to be executed. In fact, some software packages to handle this particular situation provide different options. There might be one spatial operator within that excludes anything that's along the boundary, and then another one that is completely within, and that operator would include anything along the boundary. You may want to select this point or not, depending on uh, what it is this data represents and what the analysis is that you're doing. So the key point here is to understand, uh, or make sure that you understand, the way that your software package works in this area to ensure that it's making the same assumptions that you are and understanding the spatial relationships that it's executing the same way that you want them understood for the execution of your analysis. From there, of course, because the geometry and attributes are linked, once you select uh, your features based on their spatial location, you can take a look at the attribute table, see what's selected, and so find out what kinds of characteristics those features have. This might allow you to discover uh, very important patterns and relationships between uh, locations and characteristics. I'm not going to be able to go over all of the possible spatial relationships here in this video. That's going to have to be left to further exploration and perhaps in a different format. But you should definitely look up the selection by location query in your software package and get to know how it works. I will say that once you get used to being able to make spatial queries like this, you're probably not ever going to want to be without that functionality again. General basic database, database software like Microsoft Access or other open source database uh, software are great for storing aspatial data. They store lots of data in tables and they're excellent at managing all of those data tables and handling the relationships between them. And then you can make all kinds of sophisticated queries based on those tables using SQL. But they don't store the spatial relationships between features, and they don't let you make queries, obviously based on spatial location, because it's not stored. Let's say that you have a list of customers for your business. You might create a database with all of the information that you collect about your customers. Then you can query that information about whatever they buy, or when the last time they made a purchase is, or something like that. You might also store their addresses in a field in one of your tables. But then there's no query that I can do on that field that has all of these addresses recorded uh, using SQL that will let me, for example, find out how many of my customers are within a mile of my business or how many are within five miles. You just don't have the capability to 
uh, query that kind of information using the attribute tables, using attribute queries. But that's certainly information that you might want to know. You know, where are my customers? Where are the customers that spend the most money? Where do the customers live who buy certain kinds of items? Should I be advertising in certain areas but not in others? In order to answer these kinds of questions, you'll need to have a geographic information system. By the way, when uh, all you store all of those addresses for your customers uh, in an attribute table, sometimes this is called uh, quasi-spatial data, or storing all of those addresses in a data table in general. They're quasi-spatial data because they do refer to certain locations, right, an address. So in a certain sense, it's spatial, but there's no geometry attached to it. So I can't bring to bear all of the tools for geospatial analysis on that list of addresses, such as selecting by location. However, there are methods to convert this uh, quasi-spatial data into geometry if you want to expand the kinds of geographic analysis that you do. Actually, the process by which you use a computer to convert addresses into points on a map is called geocoding, and we'll talk about that specifically in a future video. Uh, Alright, well, I will see you in the next video.